No, no, no. Right. Let's let the sun shine in. It's a daytime episode. Indeed. Uh, of, of episode 305 of the Hooniverse podcast. Uh, I'm your host, Jeff Glucker. Joining me as always is Mr. Ron Baugh. How are you, sir? I'm well. Good, good. Nice sunny day. It is. It's beautiful. I mean, this is really why folks like you and I moved to Southern California and deal with all of the, the, the issues that we deal with on a daily because days in late October where it's 80, 85, 90 degrees and like you can do anything you want outside, like can't be. I, I mean, dare I say it's too hot today. <laughs> it's, it's a bit warm. Yeah, yeah. But um, I'm not going to complain because the alternative is the entire reason why I left the East Coast or the South. Yes, correct. Correct. Um, all right. Let's roll in. There's something you want to talk about. Uh, this is you brought this up, but it is a good thing to talk about. Chevy unveiled the new Corvette Z06. Uh, I'm going to let you go first. What do you think? I don't know, man. I mean, I'm, I'm not the biggest fan of the C8 styling uh, to begin with. So I was really hoping that the, the Z06 version would kind of vindicate and, I don't know, bring the, the design together more cohesively and more aggressively. Mm-hmm. I mean, I feel like there's just too much going on and that still, you know, hasn't been kind of exacerbated with the uh, with the Z06 model. It's, it's still super angular and like just it seems like there's lines on lines on lines and there's just so much going on that it's it's hard for me to kind of like I'm not enamored with it. It's like it, okay. it's very much, uh, I don't know, overly styled. It is overly styled. I think the Z07 package helps a lot. Um, that wing is crazy, though. The wing is crazy, but the, the crazy part of the car is the heart of the car. It's a flat plane crank, five and a half liter V8, making naturally aspirated V8, making 670 horsepower and 460 pound feet of torque with an 8,600 RPM red line. That's wild. That's super exciting. Bananas. Um, it, it makes that the power way up there, though. Uh, right. I think uh, peak horsepower is like 8,300 or something like that. That's so so you got to be wailing on it the whole time, which is kind of awesome. And then it's really neat that it sits, it has to occupy the same space as the LT2, the smaller engine. So then they built everything else around that. Um, it's, it's basically a totally different engine, of course, with roots being tested in the C8 race car, which is super awesome. Um, it, is a, it is a monstrous, monstrous thing. Yeah. Uh, I'm eager to give it a go. Oh, also crazy. On the Z07 package, the rear tires. Did you read this number? I don't know. 345s. That's wild. That's cool. <laughs> on 21s. Also, oh, really? No, I didn't, I didn't dig that, that deep in the spec sheet. Okay, that's super yeah. interesting. 20s and 21s. 20 in front, 21 in the back. Carbon. Yes. So Carbon Revolution made the wheels. Yeah. Um, and I guess they've been working with Chevy over the last five years to develop these wheels or something crazy like that. Because uh, what was the first one to go carbon? The, was it the GT350? Right. I was going to say, you know, it's like the, the interesting thing about the Z06 to me is like, I don't know how long it's been in development, but I mean, if they've been working on wheels and tires for five years and, you know, probably the, the entire program for just as long. But like, it's almost like they're playing catch up to the GT350 and GT350R with the, the flat plane crank, you know, the, the carbon wheels. It's like, you know, four guys can say, dude, we did that, you know, five, six years ago you know it's yeah. like it's not exactly cutting edge yeah it's, it's new for chevy but it's not exactly cutting edge even in the domestic performance car market i bet though they if you ask them they would though you could disagree with their answer or not i guarantee if you ask them they would say we never even considered that car we were looking at ferrari the whole time which they have said yeah. um and it makes sense considering the engines are in the same place they were benchmarking the 458 Right. And there's this really cool thing I like that they did for the exhaust because, you know, modern cars are so much quieter these days, even cars like the Z06. And I actually think the C8 Stingray is, is too quiet for my own liking unless your foot is to the floor. Right. Um, but they did something in the exhaust where it, you know, comes out of uh, four pipes in the back. But there's something also where it curves around back towards the driver to send right. more noise forward, which is really cool. I think they said that the uh, the tips were actually conical, but reverse of what you would expect. So that there's yeah. re- reverberation. It sends the the exhaust note back into well into the cabin somehow, but right. but towards the driver. 
Yeah, no, super cool. Um, and also, I like that the GM engineer said theoretically you could push past the 8600 RPM red line, uh, which means in the aftermarket, you know, this is gonna they're gonna unlock 9000 RPM or something. Like Hennessy is probably like ours makes, you know, they're gonna do something insane with it. Uh, but it is, I, I think they said it's the most powerful naturally aspirated V8 ever Correct. or something like that. Yeah, that's crazy. Yep. Or in a production car specifically. Yeah, let's um, see. The, the things that I'm hesitant or skeptical about is, is the motor in general. Like, you know, Ford had so many issues with bearings and, you know, oiling with uh, with basically the size of that flat plane crank V8. Like, it had, yeah. it's kind of uncharted territory for that technology. You know, typically you're under, like, four and a half liters when you do a flat plane crank. And, right. you know, they had so many issues. And it's like, you know, I hope that GM did actually benchmark and did pay attention to the issues that Ford had so that, you know, they can avoid those issues because they're going larger in displacement. They're 5.5 liters with this motor. So, I mean, it's, it's all Remi crazy. It's a lot of mass to be spinning at 9,000 RPMs. Remind me when this is over that I have some off-the-record stuff I can tell you about. Okay. Um, okay. <laughs> I, may have, I may know some people who know some people. Um, I'll leave it at that. All right. uh, either way, it's going to be an insane ride. Zero to 60 in 2.6 seconds without forced induction, without electrification. It's just... It's wild. And it, like... That's that's the limit as far as I'm concerned for rear wheel drive vehicles. For sure, um, that's that's absolutely wild. Um, it's going to be a monster. Can't wait to see it. I've heard that allocation is going to be so tough that if at some dealerships, there's one dealer who's like a mega dealer. Who I saw a headline on Twitter that he's taken a thousand orders. I, I saw that. I didn't read the story, but I saw that headline. And it's for some of those people. It's going to take three to four years. That's bananas. I don't have that kind of patience um, for I couldn't anything. wait that long no. for a car. Yeah. yeah, if I have the money, I'll just be like, oh, you guys placed an order? Well, I'm not paying a dealer markup, but I do want it, so I'll buy it off you for 20 grand more. Right. I'll, I'll give you the money, not the dealer. Right. Um, but whatever. Okay. Switching to a, a billion percent opposite vehicle. All right. I just got back from Bend, Oregon, uh, driving the Forester Wilderness from Subaru. Um, and it was actually really good. They crushed the suspension tuning on it. The yep. damping is, is really good. It is not a Jeep. It is not a Bronco. Right. But for the mild off-roading that the average person would do, it was supremely comfortable. And we even ventured a little bit past what I th – we ventured – deeper and into more aggressive stuff than what someone who buys one of those is likely to do. Sure. And it handled it smoothly. I mean, it only has 180 something horsepower and it was fine. Um, it has a CVT and it was fine. If anybody out there is making a CVT, Subaru is doing it the best. What is it like off-road? Like on any sort of um, It's terrain, fine. Like, I mean, it, 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 it keeps you in the power it? band. Yeah. So it, it's fine. I, I would prefer an automatic in every application, sure. you know, where a CVT is offered. Right. But as far as CVTs go, Subarus does a good job. Um, they put decent tires on it. I, I was driving it in stuff where myself and the person I was sharing the car with were, like, extremely pleasantly surprised, more than pleasantly surprised, um, and it, it was doing good. Are you having a beer? I am. Oh, well, now I, I feel beer. left out. I thought you, since we were shooting during the day, I thought we weren't going to do that. It's so late you, afternoon. It's 5 o'clock on the East Coast. You think about, you think about, the Subaru Forester Wilderness for a second. Keep yeah, talking. Indeed. This is thrilling for me. It's right in my wheelhouse. I love your garage. Couldn't you, could you even bring yourself something to say. But you made me go get a beer. I, I said, well, yeah, I mean, I, I lead by example. Okay, all right. I mean, I'm not upset. Uh, <laughs> so... Um, okay, it was, oh, and another thing that made the trip really good is in Bend, Oregon, which I'd never been to and I've heard very good things. Um, normally you get great roads and okay scenery or great scenery and okay roads and Subaru picked just these, we spent so much time off road looking at majestic Oregon mountains. Um, I mean, Oregon is a beautiful place minus, you know, it's social issues outside of Portland. Um, but it, it was it was amazing and it's funny because i actually got stuck in there an extra day because hey, was i was about? part of that whole what's that what was that about um Flight so sky west is the regional airline that handles you know all the west coast for delta united all that stuff their servers went down the day before my flight and my flight got canceled and so my flight got pushed a full day back so i had to spend an extra day in bend which doesn't sound bad but i missed some shit at home that i really wanted to get to sure. the crazy thing for me though is someone who's into mountain biking literally 
every person there was either on a mountain bike or had a mountain bike on the back of their vehicle. It was wild. Yeah. And every other vehicle was a Subaru. Yeah. So it was so on brand, it was crazy. Um, under, it's like, it was um, also, it's like 36 grand, which any new car under 40 is an amazing thing these yeah, days. So uh, I was really impressed. Sounds cool, man. I, I haven't been to Bend, but I love Oregon, especially like outside of Portland, just the, 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 the train, the views, like, you know, it's just, it's absolutely gorgeous. It's, uh, it's my favorite place to visit in the spring and the fall. Yeah. Like, yeah. Summers are cool, but like, it's just not as beautiful in, in the summertime. Right. And then winter is just miserable. It's just. Yeah. Cause there was rain in the distance. So you get these right. amazing dynamic clouds right. and, and it was I mean, you could point your camera anywhere. And we were staying outside of Bend, this like really fancy place. It was really nice. My last night there, I was not at a fancy place. I was back in a, in a Hilton Garden Inn, which was actually a really nice hotel where I got to watch the Red Sox lose, um, <laughs> which I'm not happy about. But moving to the next car, which I have an interesting story about. So I just spent almost a week with an Audi e-tron RS GT. Oh, yeah. I think so. And I, th I think you can go either way on this. I think it looks a little bit better than the Taycan, the Porsche. Um, the Porsche drives a little bit tighter. Mm -hmm. I'm having an engineer from Germany break down the, the tuning differences because yeah. mechanically, I guess they're pretty much the same, right. but the tuning is different. Um, I could tell that, you know, it doesn't have as aggressive tire. It has Goodyear Eagle F1s, which I, I don't love. Right. Um, and I'm, I'm sure the suspension was different. The steering felt different, uh, but the numbers on it, Peak horsepower, 637 horsepower, via an overboost for two and a half seconds. So uh, it starts at 140K. The Taycan Turbo, which makes 670 horse, starts at 150. So this is like in between the Taycan and the Taycan Turbo. This Audi e-tron lives there. And I think it's more of a subtle EV amazingness machine. Um, and it broke on me. Oh, what happened? It left today on a flatbed. Oh, no. Um, so I was driving it for the first half of the week and it was totally fine. I even went and bombed a Canyon Road and it was awesome. And then the next day I was driving my daughter to school, full charge, no issues. Um, all of a sudden it's, it, an error popped up that said driveline fault. And then the error went away and I couldn't move the throttle past 25%. So you could still get up to speed. It was just like, mm. I was like, oh shit, that's not good. And then you would see the power come back because you can see it in the gauge cluster. And if I was really light on the throttle, I could ease my way into it. And if I tried to like then give it more throttle real quick, it would take the power away. Um, I was like, fuck. So then I, I dro dropped my daughter off, turned the car off, turned the car on, hoping seeing if it would fix it because that happens sometimes in modern cars. It did it. So then I, I take, took my phone out and I recorded a video so I could send it to Audi and be like, hey, this is exactly what's happening. Yep. Two seconds later, I get a phone call from Audi being like, hey, uh, we've never seen them do that. Oh, and okay. our techs are really curious. Like, did you use a, a charger? I'm like, no, I charge it at home using your plug. Um, I did this. They're like, ah, oh, okay. I'm like, I know you're going to want to come and get this. And I can't shoot it like this. Like, yeah, we're really sorry. I'm like, okay. Um, and then as soon as that call was over, I had full power. Of course. <laughs> so I was like, what the f I even texted them. I'm like, I don't, you're not going to believe this. I have full power again. I'm like, obviously, you still need to come get the car, figure out what's going on. I'm like, yep, that's fine. Um, and then, so then this morning, I was like, well, I had full power yesterday. I'll drive my daughter to school in it today. And the, it was actually worse. I couldn't get over like 10%. It was like, I'm like, I had to like move out of someone's way because I was going too slow for the road. I was like, fuck, I don't want to be an asshole here. Um, and yeah, they came and picked it up at like 9.30 and I was like, my pretty expensive broken car. But when it was working, it was great. Yeah. yeah I'm, I'm super curious about the, the tires, like the, the wheel and tire package obviously is something that, you know, I'm interested in, but uh, the, like those Eagle F1s, like I, I don't know how many cars those are OE on, but like that just seems like a strange choice for, you know, something with that, that much power and handling capability. I think it is to pull it back a little bit and have a compromise. So it even goes right. back to the, the, the other vehicle, the Forester Wilderness runs tires called Yokohama Geolanders, which are like right. baby's first all-terrain. You know, like they're actually good. They're good on-road and they're decent enough off-road where they're not loud on-road. So they're perfect for a crossover. 
like the Forester, whereas on my Montero, it's like KO2s or nothing, you know, and I, I know Toyos and, and Falcons are good too, but I'm, I'm a KO2 guy. Um, and with the e-tron, I feel like it's a little bit of, of Porsche being like, hey, you're not putting Michelins on that fucking right. thing. You're, right. you're not... Um, it's it's an that's not getting handicap. Pups. It's so weird. Yeah, you're not. You're, and and then Audi's also like, no, we weren't anyway, bro. Chill, because we want a little bit more of a compromise with like a little, maybe a little bit more cushion our sidewall or something like that. Right. Um, that's all I can think of why they would do that, unless there's another option you can spec or be like at the you know the dealer be like, get those fucking F ones off and burn them, right. <laughs> and then give me uh, you know, yeah cup twos or not cup twos, but like. P4S's or whatever the hell. Cup twos are always answered. Yeah, yeah but like on a, on a daily basis, I, I, my, I want my tread wear to be a little bit higher. And I, you know, it, it yeah. Um, cup twos are always I'm, awesome. I'm but spoiled. I'm spoiled. That's just my tire of choice when it's available in an applicable size for one of my cars. But I mean, you know, it's, I, I'm not the normal consumer or driver. Either. Well, can't you just call people? Well, I'm not quite there yet. Oh, because I can. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Let me hook you up. Let me know what you need. Well, I can, but I, then I, you know, I cover them. I write about them, and and it's pretty much. Right. That's how I got the Vredestines for the Jag, which are a perfect fit for that car, yep. and then the KO2s. And my wife's CX5 has uh, BFGs as well, but like regular road BFGs. Yeah. Um, that sounded like a pretentious ass journalist brag, and I'm trying to unwind it a little bit. Um. I, I might be closer to that level next week. We'll see. I've got something okay. uh, something brewing, and um, okay. My, my Mustang's taking part in a commercial uh, this uh, tomorrow, actually. Well, so we'll, 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 this is a perfect segue because I want I wanted. This is a perfect segue. I wanted to talk about your project car stuff. So, what is going on oh, with the Mustang? Man, dude, it has been a couple weeks, and I'm thrilled. I went from one car out of four running and driving. Within two weeks, I've got four cars out of five running and driving. So it's uh, it's been a hell of a come up, and I don't even know how it all happened, but. Um, yeah, Mustang head gaskets fixed. That's totally drivable. I got new wheels. I had to build new uh, American Racing two-piece forged wheels for that for this commercial coming up. Um, I I finally uh, acquired the Audi S7 that uh, that I think I teased. I didn't want to jinx before, um, but finally got that in the garage. And um, yeah, my my Tahoe is off getting uh, brakes and sway bars and such installed. I got <clears throat> sway bars from Beltec and. Um, they they left it up to me to order the, order the parts and I ordered the wrong parts so so we're swapping those out um, but uh, yeah man I'm I'm pretty thrilled like it's uh, it's crazy how everything came together in just uh, in just a couple weeks like back in like July August I was lamenting I was like I only have one car and it's not all that fun to drive and now it's like yo I'm back in the game like oh nice. the, I, the other one is my seventy nine K ten um, that's just a flip project I think I right. mentioned it before but um, yeah. I got that thing finally polished out. Like I pulled that thing out of a barn in South Dakota a year ago, and I just had my detailer come and polish it out. And like, I hadn't moved it or thought about it really in months, but just jumped in, put some gas in the car, fired right up. Like that thing runs I've got, good. Yeah, I've got uh, I've got tires and wheels on the way for that. And then uh, yeah, man, that thing is uh, is gonna hit the I road. I need to borrow that. It's cool. It's just because I, I miss having like a pickup truck. I might need to like spend like a, a long weekend or something with that one. Yeah, it's, um, it's I still need you know, to drive. It's like four wheel drive, so it's not my thing. But like, I think yeah. I'm gonna stance it cool. I'm gonna do like a small lift on it and 33s. I've already got Falcon uh, Wild Peaks for it. I'm just gonna do some steel wheels, just something simple like period correct. It's uh, it's cool, but uh, it's yeah. just it's just not my taste. So it's just something that I want to you know move on and uh, get a few bucks out of it and let somebody else enjoy it. Yeah, no, that I, I mean, it'd be, I mean, I, I could shoot video of it too, sure. and maybe that raise the profile of it like by like two percent, um, <laughs> yeah, just just a smidge. You would um, you would know rad. better how to how to use this and enjoy it than I would. I would actually well, learn I, learn a lot from riding along with you in that. Thing. I wouldn't. I don't want to break it. Um, no, but it'd be fun to cruise it to the top of a mountain. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Especially if like, you're gonna put real tires on it, we yeah, might as well. Yeah. For sure. We'll get, I, mean, we'll I, mean, I want to prove it capable. I don't want to, you know, sell this thing and like, you know, it's fragile and you know, breaks on the on the new owner like, you know, yeah. on their drive home. Like, I, I want to. Right. I don't want to torture test it, but I want to make sure that it's at least capable and like, you know, not a heap. As long as there's nothing rusted underneath that we nothing, can break. Okay. Nothing whatsoever. There's a little right. like surface yeah. rust and like the, uh, oh, the the like bedsides and stuff, but there's no there's no rust through. There's no rust on anything mechanical that thing was really in a barn for as far as i can tell like the last 30 years 
and it wow. hadn't uh, it hadn't run in 16 years. But <laughs> wow. like I said, I put fresh gas in it, poured some gas in the carb, thing fired right up, and I pulled it what out of the barn. Seventy nine. It's a so, square body. It's two tone green and white with a green interior. So, is that a carbureted three fifty? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. And uh, manual three speed with granny gear. Oh, cool. That basically then same, uh, same gearbox I think that was in my F100. Nice. Or similar gearbox, rather. Like I said, I think Ford used the new process. I don't know what Chevy used. Um, awesome. All right. On my front, um, the Jag, I, I don't remember if I mentioned that the oil pressure has been oddly low. No, um, I think last time we talked, it had a fuel leak. Yeah, we- but it's not doing that. It's like okay. so intermittent and weird. Um, the car smells like fuel sometimes, but um, I'm going to drop it off because I, dr- I was driving home after a trip from the, I parked it at LAX and I was driving back and um, my oil pressure is reading low, like really low compared to when I first got it. The car has oil, it's running fine, so it could just be the gauge, but I want to get that checked out because that's, that's, you don't want that shit to happen. Um, and when it's there, I'm going to see if they can look into why it might smell like fuel. Uh, it has saddle tanks, so it might be a whole fucking thing. Right. <laughs> but um, I'd rather it not because my wife doesn't like driving in a car that smells like fuel, and I don't blame her yeah, at all. Yeah, I can't really blame her. No. Um, and it's fuel injected. Have... Like, you know, that's like the number one advantage of having a fuel injected car is that, you yeah. know, you don't smell like gas like when you get out well, of it. So. And it's not like it's the smells come from the front. The, the smell is coming from the back. Yeah. Um, that's where I get the fuel smell from. So it's it's lines or tanks or vents or something. Yeah. Um, either way, I should get it looked at. Um, otherwise, it's driving fine. I want to get the, the rip in the passenger seat taken care of, though that is pretty expensive. Uh, but I would like to get that done because the leather is otherwise pretty comfortable. Now, on the Montero, um, I just ordered, finally, after years of not having it, a new brake and clutch pedal covers, the rubber that goes over the pedals. The, the brake pad's fine. Um, but the clutch for the last few years, I've been using grip tape from a skateboard, um, which is a, I, just, I think on the, a smart, just right on the metal. Yeah, because yeah. you you buy a, a piece of grip tape for a skateboard is like a huge you know roll of it, mm-hmm. um, so you only need to cut out a little bit, and then if that wears off or, or peels, you just do another piece. And I'm on my second piece, and I still have this huge roll of grip tape, and it grips your shoe. Sure. It's perfect. Uh, but I would like the actual rubber cover that goes there. the surface area isn't exactly what you'd want. <laughs> well, someone was like, it's going to rip your shoes up. I'm like, I'm not, it's not like I'm like constantly dragging it back and forth yeah. on the clutch. Clutch on, clutch off. Right. Clutch on, clutch yeah. off. Um, it's fine. I'm not worried about imagine you're doing behind the yeah. wheel. Yeah. Um, the, I'm going to, it's almost time for clutch speed actually on that. I want to do clutch. Um, but the big thing I really want to do with it, and I think I'm going to talk to the fine folks in Long Beach at GTFO Overland. I want them to build me out a proper rear storage area with a fold-down sleeping platform. So I don't want to lose my second row because I need it, um, and I still want the functionality of the truck. But I want to be able to fold that seat down, that second row seat, and then have the sleeping platform fold over it, and, and I could use it to like camp in the car. Because I hate rooftop tents. And if I can sleep not on the ground, bonus. Right. And then that I can get cool. proper storage. And then if I go that far, I think I would do um, a secondary deep cycle battery and a fridge uh, and really build it out nicely. And then uh, maybe even buy some solar to put out if I was camping, not like not hard wired to the roof, just you know, run it if I was out camping. Right. Um, and uh, yeah, build out the Montero a bit more without um destroying it yeah so like the sleeping platform and all that stuff if i ever sold it would be removable if the other person didn't want it and i I think it's possible i've seen some of it done by people who are pretty handy but i'm gonna pay someone to do it and i'm curious how that would go sounds cool i think it could be good though yeah um the truck is fun i drove it today to shoot uh for auto trader the new kia sportage which is a nice looking improvement but not really something we need to talk about on the show Um, but it looks good i'm I'm a fan of almost everything that kia hyundai genesis is doing the the elantra is the one thing that i just can't get over every time i see one of those (laughs) on the road i'm just like yeah yeah, but i I guarantee whatever the next gen elantra is you're gonna be like oh shit that looks pretty good now so we'll see we'll see um but I'm going to jump over it. We don't have a lot of Twitter questions, yeah. um, but I'm going to I'm going to put these Twitter questions out. Let's hear from the people. I, uh, what's that? Let's hear from the people. 
hear from the people. Sam Rasmussen at Samu3 sorry, he had it in three instead of an E, so Samulus. What's the longest you've ever owned a car? What kind of car was it? And why did you keep it for as long as you did? You can go first on this one. Wow. Man, I can't even I don't like I don't get super attached to cars, but I don't like turn cars over that often either. I let's see. I mean the Conti? For, for sh- I mean, yeah, I've owned it the longest, but it's also been driven the shortest amount of time. I drove it for like three months, and it's been in storage for nine years. So, yeah, but this is—that's a good answer for the question. You've owned it yeah. the longest. You've owned it the yeah. longest, and why do you keep it for as long as you did? I, I, I've kept it because I plan a full build with a chassis, with not probably not even air ride. Um, there might be an interim stage where I do air ride with like the factory chassis and motor and stuff. It needs an engine rebuild, but uh, I've got big aspirations for that car. I really want it to be a statement piece, and, like, you know, it's just something that's been in my head for so long, and, like, even though it's costing me an arm and a leg to store it every month, and, like, by now, like, what me and my partner have invested in the car is not, doesn't make it the steel that it once was. I still feel like, you know, if we were to, if we were to just spruce it up, make it nice, like, literally just rebuild the motor and clean the thing up and, like, put air ride on it, so it's actually drivable because now it's 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 probably got chop springs and like you literally can't go in any driveway or any sort of any sort of like incline or or decline. So it's totally undrivable as it is now. But if we were to just do that, like I think we'd easily get we'd double our money. But ultimately, it's it it was supposed to be a project between the two of us where we'd work on cars and he has no idea how to work on cars and I'm just this much incrementally <laughs> better. But um, no, ultimately, like I think now with industry connections and just like the vision and like, you know, I wouldn't I wouldn't try and work on this myself, but I, I really want to build a cool custom Lincoln that nobody's ever seen like the last sure. So that's why it's uh, it's still around. Yeah, I guess that is the the car that I've owned the longest. Um, so for me, it is my <laughs> Mercedes wagon. Um, so similar story as your Lincoln. I barely drove it because I bought it to be a project car. 1984 Mercedes 300 TD. Why did I keep it as long as I did? Because it's going to be something someday. I literally saw it today and took a picture of it. And I haven't posted it to Instagram yet. It is, it's, it's the shop is just slammed. Um, so it's, it's a low priority for the shop. Uh, I think I want to sit down with them and be like, hey, what can we do to move the timeline of this thing up? And I'm sure the answer is money, but, uh, we will are going to have that conversation when I bring the Jag there next week. Um, but yeah, I've owned the Benz for probably inching close to eight years now, uh, and it's 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 a thorn in my side. But I I'm not going to let it go because it it will happen. Yeah. Um, Honestly, just, that, I think that car is what introduced me to Universe back in the day. So it's like okay. you know, like it definitely is iconic to some of your readers, viewers, like, you know, it's like it was literally what introduced us to, uh, yeah. to the channel. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, it's like every time I get the registration every year when you have to just click non op again, <laughs> non op, non op, I was like, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you twice, fuck you three times. Um, but it, it will happen like your Lincoln will happen and we will ride who oh, arm in arm <laughs> crying <laughs> I can do it man um so someday someday all right Brian Seidel at BC Seidel have there been any more Gary Busey sightings lately you probably don't know this I don't. this is an actual podcast but reference but I'm curious and this sounds awesome years ago when Blake Zerong was still a co-host of the show he and I were in maybe like a Lexus LS and we picked Travis Okulski of Road and Track, then I think maybe still Jalopnik, I don't remember, Probably. at LAX to do a mobile podcast. We picked him up, had a Zoom with some mics, and we just drove around from LAX. We went out towards PCH and then drove up the coast. And while we were driving, Blake all of a sudden shouts, holy shit, that's Gary Busey. And sure enough, next to us in a Prius or a Lexus HS, I forget which one, was fucking Gary Busey. <laughs> and we were like, cruising on PCH, light for light, until he turned off into his Malibu community way up, like Neptune's net far right. And we're just like, <laughs> in the middle of this podcast, we're geeking out because it's fucking Gary Busey next to us, which is the weirdest shit. Did you try and get um, his attention nope. or engage with him? No, I think I think we tried, but he probably looked over and made that fucking Gary Busey face and we scared us straight. Um, so we're like, like, oh shit, wear your motorcycle helmets, kids. Um, <laughs> 
And uh, so, no, Brian, we have not seen any more Gary Busey sightings lately, but that is a deep cut of the Hooniverse podcast. Cars and Cats at Sean Keeley 2. What is the ultimate Gambler 500 car and what is the ultimate Lemons car? Um, so I had on my Motor Trend Show Shift Talkers, we had the guy who started Gambler on, and he's like the most insanely awesome person. I think they're building a Pontiac vibe to look like the old Suzuki Escudo for a Gambler. Um, and he swears that Pontiac vibes are the best cars because no one wants them and you can just thrash and beat the shit out of them. Um, but I would say the ultimate Gambler 500 car would be if you could find, because you want to have fun with it, similar to Lemons, but I almost want to say, like, if you could find, like, a junky Ford Ranger, because the engine is cheap and easy to work on, you can throw tons of parts at it, you can fix it in the parking lot of an O'Reilly's, um, almost anything domestic and from the 90s, I think is probably a good way to go. I'm going to... I, I'm agreeing with you while disagreeing with you. Fox body Mustang convertible. My buddy Bo built one just a few years ago, specifically for Gambler 500. He lifted it, put it on probably like 31s, did fender flares just like my Mustang, and it's like the same, same car, same color combo. It's like white with the black trim, black fender flares, built a roll cage, almost like uh, the Th- Thomas Crown Affair, like uh, yeah. 68 GT500 yep. car. Like super cool i think he saw I, I know he sold that car probably a couple of years ago but it was so cool to watch him build that and like you know really yeah, go I, out and enjoy it and like you know it made I it was a five liter car. car made power like it was cool i remember that car because i wanted to buy it really? he's yeah. the dude who also owns the 2jz mustang right? Mustang 2jz yeah. yep mm-hmm. which did he did he sell that or he still has he it? still has that i don't know like current condition of it i think he's like He's like he does some really cool stuff and like he just has fun with all of his builds. Like he builds out like trunk vignettes and stuff. So he had like yeah. a, he had like I, I think it was in the Mustang. He built out like a, uh, a, a slot car track in the in the trunk of that car. It's just like just for shows and just for shits and giggles. And it's just like yeah, dude, have all the fun with your cars. Like yeah, like do now, whatever you want. For Lemons car, um, if you've never raced Lemons and you don't have a lot of track experience, something front wheel drive is pretty smart with easy access to parts because you'll be less overwhelmed out on the racetrack if you have track experience you're obviously going to want something fast and rear wheel drive and the easy answer used to be e30 bmw but you can't afford those anymore to go racing with um the super cheap still answer is miata but that's not as fun even though those win races really well um the um hold on what it i think my wife's coming in (laughs) i was like Okay, change your mind. Um, so, the it's again, it's something domestic. A, a fox body, if you can find a cheap, junky fox body, which good I think luck, there's. Good luck, bro. Good luck. Yeah. Okay. Um, then, because what about like um, the next level up? SN95 would probably be the, the best candidate. Like, a, I would say a SN95, like the 96 to 99 cars with the 4.6. Like, yeah. not super reliable, but not, also not super desirable. So they're going to be the cheapest, like V8 right. powered, you know, Mustang that you can find. And, you know, there's parts of plenty and, you know, everything is like Legos on those, just like Fox bodies. Yeah. It's just like you can replace everything like within minutes. And if you if you strip the weight out um, because you're pulling everything out of it and you build it up a little bit where it's not like super over the top cheater, it'll be fast as fuck out there yeah. on the track. Yeah. Um, there's yeah there's so many go fast parts for those so you can have a ton of fun um, everybody thinks like a Honda Civic is a good one but I guess those like to eat head gaskets on track uh, there is I, the ultimate lemons car really is something that for the lemons people is something they haven't seen before so if you want to win you you go with like that SN95 Mustang um, but if you want to throw them for a loop you go with something quirky or unique or old that's i mean that's why we run a 62 ranchero which right. is terrible um, you know the uh, an alternative a fox body alternative that i'm sure is still cheap are the thunderbirds and the cougars because like i would literally as you were speaking i was literally thinking xr7 cougar yeah, yeah. <laughs> like same power plant all the same suspension everything like all the bolt-on stuff is the same but they're just like the bigger cushier body style and like they're so unloved these days that I mean, if you can find one, they're going to be cheap, like probably one quarter of the price of a Fox Body Mustang. Yeah, that could be a really good answer. And specifically go Mercury just because the Thunderbird is more common. So you have a little bit of like, oh, it's the Mercury Cougar. You can have fun with a lot of different themes with that. Yeah. Um, 
All right, there you go. Uh, all right, Pat's Curtains, at Pat's Curtains. What's more important to you, unique but short-lived experiences in many different cars or having many experiences with one beloved car? Personally, I think there's a car for every experience. And it's like, you know, like I said, like I don't I don't get super attached to cars, but I also don't like go through them like, you know, once a year or every two years or whatever, you know? And I feel like for me, it's about not even just the experiences, but just making the car mine and mm -hmm. like getting it to a point where I'm happy with it. And I'm like, okay, this is what I wanted to do with this car. You know, this is why I bought this, why I built it, whatever it is. So it's like, for me, it's not even a number of experiences, but like I get satisfaction out of just like finally getting it to a point where I'm like happy with it and I can do exactly what I want to do with it. Like my Tahoe is like, I bought it because, you know, growing up like sport trucks were like the coolest thing ever to me. And I thought living by the beach, cruising up and down the coast in like a Tahoe with the rear hatch up, bumping music and just like checking out like the scenery on the coast was like the thing. So like for me, like I can do that every weekend and it's totally gratifying and it's exactly why I wanted that truck. And, you know, it fulfills that that kind of like teenage fantasy for me. So for me, it's yeah. not it's not the number of experiences, but, you know, the, the genuine experience that you get from a particular vehicle. Sure, sure, that makes sense. Um, uh, my my answer to this is um, just because it's kind of my job, so I really like, I, I, I like both, which is a bit of a cop-out answer because I like the, the long-term experiences with my own cars, um, like driving off-road with my daughter or going camping or something like that, and then the unique short-lived experiences with the vehicles I drive for work where I'm fortunate to drive a lot of different things um, and I have some really good memories of various high level press trips that stick in my head you know like uh, driving a parade lap at the 24 hours of Nürburgring was short lived and fucking awesome I yeah. uh, did it in Aston Martin um, and it was and because it was the N24 parade lap so like every all the fans were by the fences waving their various country flags and shit it's so like radio, mates, radio, go us, you know, and um, and that was good, and and, and uh, yeah. So I, I like the unique, short-lived experiences in all these different cars, and then I really like having my own longer-term stuff with my own vehicles, similar similar to what you're saying, like making it your own. Like if I can really turn, add a more not ruggedness, but more camping capability to my ter my Montero, I think that's going right. to be fun. And then eventually, actually finishing my Mercedes will be yeah wonderful wonderful potential yeah, so exactly yeah but uh that's all we got shout out, for shout out to pat also pat and i follow each other on instagram we communicate so thanks for the question dude thanks for watching <laughs> nice, nice. um that's all i've got for the twitter and the script today you said your car is going into commercial that's exciting anything else on the horizon for your vehicles at the moment mm, no not really i'm just waiting to get the uh the tahoe back after i, I the uh the sway bar snafu um but um yeah i mean I'll, I'll enjoy driving that more like on the weekends and maybe even like hip canyons in that thing which i know sounds weird but it should be much more capable and i mean it's lowered so like i'm, I'm really chasing that sport truck aspect of it yeah. you know i really want to enjoy it like that but um no, man, just get out and enjoy my cars. Like, I'm going to SEMA for a couple of days, and, uh, you know, I'll probably cruise up in the Audi just because it's so easy and, like, you know, it's just, like, you know, heated seats, radar cruise control, just check out and, like, you know, just get to Vegas when I get there. But, um, no, when I come back, I just want to get out and enjoy these things. And, uh, like, I mean, for me, like, October, November, December, honestly, is, like, prime driving season here in Southern California, like, like my Mustang doesn't have AC or heat, so it's like these are the months where I can I can enjoy it the most, without nice. either sweating profusely or freezing my ass off. So uh, yeah. yeah, I'm just and like I just want to enjoy my stuff for for once. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Um, Japanese Classic Car Show is as the this time weekend? of this recording is this weekend. Yeah. It'll be by the time you hear this, it'll be the, it'll have passed. Yeah. Um, I'm thinking about hitting that up with my daughter. Um, just bringing the Montero to park, not to yeah. show or anything like that. That'd be, um, cool. that'd be good. I love that. I haven't been in probably five years, but that's one of my favorite shows. But they, they moved. It's not been. in Long Beach now, right? No, no, it's in Anaheim. It's at Angel Stadium. Oh, okay. um, I've never been, so it should be interesting. Um, and I, I, I journalist it up so that I could get the media, media pass. They mailed it out the other day. Nice. Thank you, Japanese Classic Car Show. 
I'll take some pics and write it up and all that good stuff. But uh, that's all I got this week. Uh, light, easy week. Tell everybody where they can find you online. 777 style on Instagram and the web. I am at Hooniverse Jeff. Uh, you can listen to this on Anchor, Spotify, Google. I mean, if you're listening to it, you already know where the fuck you can listen to it. Um, and then we're doing the video version of this. If you don't listen, watch the video version, if you're audio only video, we're already on YouTube and Spotify is about to add video podcasts. We're going to be there as well. Um, I'm trying to monetize. Watch out, Joe every, Rogan. And, yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> and then also um, we have a new blip ship shirt, which dropped Thursday, October 28th. I'm going to use the actual date so I don't get confused. Uh, it's today for us as we record this. But there's a new Blip Ship shirt that's part of their autumn sale. Go check that out, blipship.com slash universe. We have a few other shirts still for sale. We have some stickers for sale. And Blip Ship has a ton of cool shit because it's their autumn sale. So go do that. And uh, that's it. And we'll see you next week. Um, that's episode 305. Bye. Adios, folks.